Division, sponsored by Fight Division. I'm here at All Powers Gym uh, for an Interclub competition, and I've managed to get a moment with Stuart Tomlinson, who is the content creator for Warrior Collective. Guys, if you are not following Warrior Collective, do so now on Instagram. It's an incredible page, breaks down like loads of different techniques and drills. Um, so first of all, hi, how are you doing? Thanks so much. I know you've got a lot of people in with you today. Um, thanks for taking the time. How are you? Um, very well, thank you. Um, obviously, we're here at All Powers Gym. Uh, Panikos Yusuf is a good friend of mine, so I always try to support uh, yeah. local interclubs. And obviously, like I said, Pan's a good friend, so I'm, I'm here most most interclubs. Amazing, thank you. So, um, can, can I just ask, so who are you? Who have you brought down with from your club today? Is there anyone where it's their absolute first time, like any absolute beginners, the first sort of competition vibe? Yeah, no. Today, uh, last interclub we had quite a lot on. I think we had like 25, 30. Today has been a lot smaller from the gym that I own, uh, so we've only had about, I think about seven or eight today. A couple right. of them are first timers, so yes, yeah, that time of the month where everyone's away or working yeah, or on holidays. boys' holidays in Tenerife. So yeah, but it's it, it's never about how many you bring. It's always about the experience of the individual that comes down. Yeah, a hundred percent. So in terms of like the the beginner ones, what's what's the sort of advice you give them? Because obviously, like to step into a ring, whether it's a competition, an ins club, or just a sparring day, the nerves that come with that and the adrenaline. And um, what's what's the sort of advice that you give them before and after? Well, obviously, because uh, I'm here today with a few first timers, you get into a bit of a a routine of what you say to first timers, yeah, and a lot yeah, of yeah. that is the first few fights you're never going to usually see your optimum performance yeah. because there are other factors that you have to get used to um, adrenaline yeah. nerves uh, performance control, anxiety yeah. uh, there's, there's many other factors and I, and I guess that especially within martial arts we're very much about physical training yeah. but mental training to help prepare for fights is something that only serious athletes kind of really consider yeah. so yeah, yeah. a lot of first timers and novice fighters underestimate especially in the early fights how 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 much that can affect their performance um, but it's it's something we all have to go through yeah. you know? it is it's part of the learning curve to understand like how how differently you're going to feel when your heart's like, doing you know twice the beat so I just want to talk a little bit more about Warrior Collective so I've followed the page for so long I'm so honestly so excited to be interviewing you um, what how did that start like what made you want to start putting out content for martial artists and sort of breaking down the techniques and stuff like where did that where did that start well, I mean, I started filming now for Warrior Collective. Well, I started Warrior Collective about, probably about nine years ago now. Maybe, uh, but the idea started uh, a lot longer. Um, when I was younger, obviously there wasn't the internet. I'm that old. There was no Google, no internet, no search engine. So you had to get recommendations. You had to find books. You had to find magazines. So it, it was a bit more difficult to find you know, where, where are the good martial arts, where are the good gyms. Uh, and again, for me, when I was younger, I did travel overseas, so it was very hit and miss. Yeah. You know, how good's this gym? Uh, what, what, what's the training going to be like? What's the gym ethos going to be like? And I always wondered how good it would be to actually go out and see for myself yeah. how good these gyms are, what they coach. And then, obviously, as time's gone on, it became showing that to the people. And yeah. that's really how Warrior Collective started, was kind of wanting to visit good gyms, but also showing people around the world where the good gyms are, what good gyms look like. Yeah. Uh, and again, again, going back nine, even nine years ago, a lot of gyms were still flying under the radar of social media. I mean, that was still the early days of social media then, to be fair, um, and, and the internet website. So it's become a lot more of a thing over the past couple of years, especially because of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I guess for me, you know, it started at that point and I've been traveling and filming ever since. That's amazing, and yeah, it's nice that, like, say, it's um, it's something that was. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> we are at an ins club. Sorry, guys. Um, so it's something. It was basically just a passion for you that they, you then wanted to share with everyone else, which is amazing, and it comes through as well. Um, your gym is really cool. You've got all the sort of uh, you're into the superheroes, the anime, that kind of thing. Like, talk us a little bit through that. Uh, yeah. So uh, my gym is is classed as Greater Manchester, but it's right on the outskirts. Okay. It's uh, just in Tameside for those of you who, who kind of know Manchester. Uh, it's probably about six, seven thousand square foot, yeah. so it's not massive. Yeah. Um, it's bigger than some gyms, not yeah, as big as exactly. others. Yeah. Uh, and for me, uh, I've, I've, I've always been a feel like I'm a bit different. Uh, I always like to show my personality with yeah, stuff. So yeah, whether it's yeah. through my filming uh, and with the gym, obviously the artwork. So 
the artwork started with just one wall and it became a bit of a thing and then ever since we started uh, we've done like one wall one one area and at the moment now like like 80 percent of the gym is covered with artwork and and i just I, yeah i put on there all sorts of pop culture in my podcast studio upstairs you've probably not seen that but i have ufc fighters and fighters that i um fighters that i admire all across the wall so you got like Damon Trainer, Andy Sauer, Masato, John Jones, Conor McGregor, um, uh, Joe Schilling, Kevin Ross, uh, Jackie Buntan. So a real mixture of fighters from different promotions, different styles. Uh, I'm very much, even though I, you know, I love the striking arts, uh, kickboxing, boxing, Muay Thai, I also really love MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, wrestling. Yeah, so I've seen a bit um, that recently on the page. I've seen a few of like the sort of grappling and working down like. My, my, at my gym we do all of it and, uh, and I've been doing grappling as long as I've been doing striking but I think uh, when I first started grappling it wasn't really as, as high level it is nowadays so yeah. my grappling I would consider it very basic but I've always enjoyed mixing the ranges up, yeah. uh, grappling and striking and yeah so with Warrior Collective funnily enough actually the reason why it became more striking dominated was just a case of the gyms that were really wanting me to visit. You know, so when I first started, and you'll probably know yourself, when no one knows you, it's like yeah. you've got to kind of kind of sell the concept to people. Yeah. And it was the striking gyms that really embraced me, and in particular the Muay Thai, uh, because I think they felt like I felt that it was a very underappreciated yeah. and also undereducated system. Yeah. It's a lot more technical and more clever than some other martial arts might, you know, consider. Well. Yeah, because they just see us kick each other, kick each other, kick each other, low kick elbow. And, and actually, um, again, some Muay Thai coaches, you know, they're genius level, you know, and they they create systems which create consistently great fighters. You know, in the UK, we have a very strong Muay Thai history. And I'd say right now, we're probably, you know, one of the top countries in the world, top, top three, top five. You know, you're always going to have the argument of, top one and two and I'm not going to get into that <laughs> argument obviously Thailand's always going to be number one because of the, of the nature of the beast over there but yeah. the UK is is, is completely right. up there in the runnings um, so speaking about that like obviously saying like different countries involved and stuff um, you, you've been traveling recently is it America you've been traveling around to other gyms and stuff is that something you plan on doing in the future do you have any plans to go over sort of anywhere else and, and like you say like experience like the different levels and different cultures of it yeah, so um, actually my most recent ones, I've just been into Europe, into Holland, uh, going and seeing the, uh, I'm very close to the Dutch community. I used to live in Holland, so um, uh, yeah, I used to go to night school at 17 to learn Dutch. Oh, I didn't know that, that's really cool, that's a really good. My, my Netherlands is slecht, my, my, my Dutch is terrible, but uh, I've always enjoyed Holland and I actually like the Dutch kickboxing style. Yeah. Obviously it's very different to the Muay Thai style, the traditional yeah. style, but I kind of like both. And then some coaches like Kieran Kettle, Damien Trainer, they they have hybrid styles where they mix between the two. So uh, from an early age, I've not been one of these people that's this system is has to be separate to this. Yeah, like I kind of yeah, yeah, I like to blend styles and create different things. But so recently I was in Holland. Um, before that, yeah, I was in. I did a five-week tour of America and Canada. So I did Calgary, uh, Vancouver, San Francisco. Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Albuquerque, New York. Uh, so I uh, did all of them in one go. And I saw an amazing amount of great people. Um, I, I'm very fortunate in that I get to be around amazing people all the time. Yeah. You know, I did a, a, an MMA convention recently where I was doing seminars with Randy Couture, Georges St. Pierre, uh, oh. Michael Bisping, and then obviously more current fighters, including Tom Aspinall. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm very fortunate in, in what I do. But so, in t to answer your question, I am going to be doing a lot more traveling. My next kind of trip for me is going to be more Asia-based. Oh, so I'm going to be heading over to uh, Japan, Singapore, Thailand. So um, yeah, that's that's where I'm headed next. Straight after that, though, I'm probably going to go back to the States. Uh, I've got. I always like going to the States and Canada. So I'll, a man I'll, of many options. Oh yeah, no. I, 
I, I, sometimes you have to make a decision because again, I have family, I have children. I don't want to be away all the time, so I have to make. Even though I want to be everywhere and everywhere, you've got finding to, that balance. I've got yeah, I've got to make a choice. I think um, it it comes through so much in your content that you are like one so passionate about it, and two like you said like with the artwork and stuff, you put your personality into into everything you do, like your content, the gym, um, and just yeah, like just sort of the vibe of the gym in itself. Um, and I think the fact that you are sort of travelling around everywhere, and like you said, you're not very like too linear or focused on one. Like it comes through so much because there's such a sort of like broad feeling for it. It's like it's just a love of the art rather than a sort of you know. And I think I think that comes through really, really well in the content. That's why it's uh, one of the, one of my favourite pages. Um, in terms of the content, obviously um, you're currently on like it's like 500,000 followers or something. So you're doing absolutely amazing on Instagram. Um, where where else can they get you? Do you is it Facebook, Twitter? Um, pretty much in terms of social media, uh, on everything really, and that's just the yeah. nature of the beast, you know, because what I do is very visual, yeah. you know, so uh, YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, even TikTok, and to be fair... Oh, you know, I didn't know you was on TikTok, that's great, yeah. yeah I mean, um, because, you know, the, the thing is for me is like each social media is just a way of showcasing the people that I visit, yeah. the people that I want to kind of... Um, let people learn about yeah. you know it's so just a platform to get the content out yeah it's like would you choose you know if we're talking historical would you choose streaming or dvds and yeah. actually you'd want to do both because yeah. each audience consumes a different media yeah. so that's why i wrote a book you know my first book came out last year i'm in the middle of my second and third books at the moment oh, sure. no, i didn't know that that's amazing we'll be looking out for that 100 percent. yeah so the books are doing really well um uh, what's the name of your book and where can we get it just so we can plug that for you as well the book's on amazon it's available kindle hardback paperback but it's a real uh, visual treat so i would definitely say get a physical copy uh, it's called the evolution of martial arts and combat sports and it's got 18 of the world's best coaches going through striking from muay thai kickboxing taekwondo mma boxing so like i said the first one's available now second one i'm just nearly finished with uh, the third one which is an mma one i'm halfway through uh, so again, that's another reason why I travel, I, I write, and uh, for the books as well. A man of many, many, many talents. So we've got books, traveling, obviously coaching, amazing, everything uh, with the content as well. Uh, is it Warrior Collective or, across all platforms? Um, on YouTube, it's actually Stuart Tomlinson. Oh, okay. uh, just because at the first, uh, again, when you first start out things, you don't know, is it better to put your name? Yeah. So, And I never really changed it. So it's Stuart Tomlinson on, on YouTube and everything else, it's Warrior Collective. Warrior, Warrior Collective on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you know, if you search, you'll find it, you know, and, and you know what, these, I, you know, I've got to say, like, again, like going back to, I've been very lucky to be around amazing people and they've contributed their time to yeah. what essentially is a free resource. Yeah. Like no one has to pay to watch these videos. Yeah. Yes, there are paid for volumes, but I don't think anyone puts out as much free content no. as I do because that was always what it was about. It was never about the money. The paid for content, is, for me, is just a way to help a gym or a coach yeah. continue with their own coaching. The, 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 the resource that is Warrior Collective is, has always been there for people all around the world. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I can go all over the world now and people know Warrior Collective. Yeah. You know, I've oh my God, as soon as I saw you, I was like, oh my God, we need to grab him for a chat. Like, I did the exact same. And it is because, like you say, you, you can just feel it off your It's the passion for it. And, and it does, it really does come through. It's amazing. It's great to hear you say that. I'm glad you're a fan. And, you know, it's, that's, what it, that's what it's there for. You know, that's why I never kind of try to make it about me. Mm -hmm. I just try to uh, showcase my journey and really just put good people to the front where sometimes, you know, especially the really good people, they're so busy what, doing what they're doing. Yeah. They don't really get the credit that they deserve yeah. or they don't get the eyes on them. And so for me, you know, that's a really big thing for me. It's like, okay, these people are very good. You know, we see the fighters, but we don't see the coaches, yeah. you know, and the fighters are, don't get me wrong, the fighters are the ones risking it, but no fighter is a, an island. You yeah, know, everyone's got a team and, and very often that coach and that fighter, they're the ones who've been together. Yeah. So even before like, you know, we talk like people like Connor or John who, who are multi-millionaires, stars, who've got entourages, yeah. they started with a coach with one person. Yeah, you know, we all start so. off with that and you've got to have a real love for fighting in order to make it because there's going to be a lot of downs as well as up so you know hopefully with warrior collective that helps coaches it helps people and 
yeah, again, I guess that's what it's there for. 100%. I think, like I say, because, because your intention is so, so clear and so pure and just based on passion, um, I'm, I'm sure it'll just go from strength to strength. So we'll tag it, uh, Warrior Collective. We'll make sure it's everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok now as well. And definitely check out the book as well on Amazon. Stuart, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute honour to chat to you. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you. Here we go.